My name is Michael Peel and I'm a correspondent for the Financial Times based in Bangkok, mainly covering the five countries of the Mekong sub-region of Southeast Asia. My project was part of an FT series on land and investment. I travelled with Pulitzer Centre producer Steve Sapienza to Myanmar, which is at the crossroads of South and Southeast Asia. We visited an industrial zone near Yangon, the biggest city, before moving on to the giant eastern state of Shan. There, we spoke to villagers involved in land rights disputes, including the family of a farmer who burned himself to death. We also visited the State Land Administration Office and interviewed an advisor to the governor. From there, we traveled on to Jopyo on the west coast, the site of big developments, including Chinese-backed oil and gas pipelines and a planned industrial zone. We looked at a land dispute linked to the gas pipeline project before returning to Yangon for another round of interviews. I was struck by how important land is to communities in Myanmar, not just as an asset, but also emotionally, in a country that's still mostly poor and rural. People we spoke to were sometimes angry, but at other times they seemed sad or bewildered as they asked what they would do without their small holdings. The sheer quantity and variety of disputes was also forbidding, from the misty hills of Shan State to the wild shoreline of Jopyul. In some cases, people alleged their land had simply been seized. In others, they'd been paid compensation but said they'd been put under pressure to sign or had received a bad deal. The companies and officials we spoke to mostly insisted they were doing their best to treat smallholders fairly in difficult circumstances. One thing all sides agree is that land disputes, old and new, are a big problem Myanmar and potential investors there face as the country emerges from almost half a century of military dictatorship. The story of Myanmar's opening, culminating in the historic elections of November 2015, has been inspiring, but both Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy and the former ruling military need urgently to find a new deal on land.